everyone. Uh, good morning from this time of recording. It should be uploaded by the morning time. Um, so before I go with the recap, I, I'm going to just give you guys an update on my mental health. Um, I'm doing okay. Um, I'm taking one day at a time after the passing of the family member of the and the family emergencies. It, it was a tough couple of days. And um, um, fortunately, I was able to watch some of the games last week. And, and the day I'm really referring to was Tuesday. And apparently, so many good things, a lot of crazy good things happened on the day on the event of Failing Mercy, which is, you know, convenient timing. Uh, but I did watch the highlights. I did watch the highlights. So I can, I can definitely tell you in the further detail in a couple of games. And really, the games I was talking about is the Florida Panthers versus Toronto Maple Leafs and the Miami Heat versus the uh, Charlotte Hornets. So, yeah. I did. I did get. I did get some of the viewing time of those games, um, as well. Uh, but I did try my best. It's just, it was tough for me. And plus my plus the low battery of my devices, it, it, it got impossible. It, it, it got too impossible. So, and one of us needs to have our devices on for the map navigation. So, yeah, it was. It's been a tough week. Um, but you know what though. I have Miami sports and you guys to thank for. Um, I only have 44 subscribers, but you guys have been the best in the world so far. Um, and the reason why I said so far is because I hope hopefully soon more people will come into this community, community and um, we talk more about sports as well as uh, another update that I'm going to announce right now. And this is from my Twitter poll of the new series. I am holding this PlayStation 5 controller. And I am holding an Xbox 360 controller. And I am going to hold a PS Vita. And I'm going to hold a Wii U gamepad. And it's a little bit dusty, but I'm holding these things and... My point here, if I'm picking up these gaming tools, is the announcement is in the future, um, about a couple of months or so, because I'm getting a new job soon. Gaming is coming to Miami TVG, and the series will be known as Miami Plays. It's, it's oh, you know, it's Let's Plays. But it's a creative turn because Miami is everywhere and gaming is everywhere. And that's why I'm just going to say Miami plays. Because we're going to do walkthroughs of a video game and do a little bit of talking to each other. Um, so, yes, stay tuned for that. And I have a Twitch and it's also Miami TVG. Please go follow me on Twitch for future streams. I'm very excited for it. It's going to be amazing. Um, it's going to be awesome, and it's going to be eventful. Um, I want to. I want to know. I want you guys to know that it's not. I don't want this just to be about sports. And you know, at this point, Miami TVG is known for sports, but I want it to be more. I want it to be what my old channel was back in the good days of you know Mirror TV before it got down to a little bit of a slump. You know, with, uh, you know, I don't want to talk further into it, but um, DM me if you want to talk about it, if, if you are um, the person who I can trust. But my point here is I want to do more. There's beach vlogs for a reason. I don't want to just be, you know, a Miami thing. I want to be a statewide thing. And the gaming thing, I want it to be a countrywide thing. So, yeah, it's confirmed. It's going to be a countrywide thing. And I'm, and I'm so excited for it. I'm... I'm ready to do it, but I need a couple of months uh, to grab another video game console. So, yeah, and also do a little bit of um, a reorganizing my gaming thing, and um, and so on and so forth. The wiring, the game catcher, my computer, um, and all that good stuff. And I bet you this, it's gonna be one hell of a ride for the gaming world. All right, enough wasting time about talking about random crap. Now, let's talk about sports. And I'm referring to Miami sports. Miami sports recap of the week. 
And so like I said earlier with um, the tough week that happened last week with the family thing, and I said I have Miami Sports to thank for, I meant it. This has been one of the best weeks of Miami Sports. One of the best weeks. Because so much good outweighed the bad. So much. And I'm thankful for it. Um, and first things first, I want to talk about baseball. Baseball is back, everyone. We got the Miami Marlins and the Tampa Bay Rays. If you're if you're from Florida, you can watch Tampa Bay Rays in St. Petersburg and the Valley Sports Sun region. Um, I'm talking like I'm in FL teams, and I'm also excited for FL teams one day. Um, but yeah, we have Miami Marlins baseball, and we're going to talk about the Marlins right away because it's been very good. It's been pretty good. We lost the series um, in the Bay Area, San Francisco, but so we, we do have a lot of good things to talk about, and, and this is why I'm not in a I'm not pretty mad about this performance because we are improving, and the improvement here is the offense. So let's talk about the first game um, against the Giants. Final score is five six in the tenth inning. So. Uh, Belts reached on the bunt signal in third from the bar throwing error. So, um, unfortunately, we th we threw the ball away to the right. Um, so, uh, Joey Wendell um, had a little bit of a little bit of a slump, but it was redeemed in the series. Um, so that scored for the Giants. And um, Ruff was able to score a single from the base hit. That allowed Belts to score. And then Bart's uh, homework to left, which was 414 feet. And that made it 3 0 San Francisco. Um, so we have a new catcher for the Miami Marlins. And his name is Stallings. Jacob Stallings, to be exact. So Jacob Stallings, he has a history with the San Francisco Giants. And boy, did he prove it in the seventh inning. It was a two run home run. Um, from Jacob Stallings, and he scored a home run for us to make it 2-3. Uh, Belt made a 2-4 for the Giants, and, you know, we, we, you know, you know, the closer for, you know, the Giants, um, we don't, we just don't know. It's a new season, so I'm just like, I'm being a little bit pessimistic about it. But Jacob Stallings came through, um, for the most part, single to center, and you cannot forget about this guy. And his name is Jazz Jism Jr. And he's more to talk about on this series. Jazz Jism takes the lead in the bottom, in the top of the ninth inning. And this is going to be a very stressful bottom of the ninth inning. And yeah, unfortunately, my nightmare came true. Um, we blew it in the ninth inning once again. Estrada homer to left with 418 feet. By the way, the Jazz Jism one was 386 feet. And Belt was 367 feet. But this one, this one was a backbreaker because it tied the game after so long trying to take the lead, and then they they got the lead right, they got the home run right away. And it also didn't help that in the bottom, in the top of the tenth inning, we had we had two guys on, and then when Brian Anderson came on, he swung at all those pitches that were out of the zone, and unfortunately, and for bottom of the tenth inning, there was a double play from a catch and a tag at first base side and um, there was a new hole for the Marlins to get out of the 10th inning and unfortunately Ruff got a base hit and Slater ended the game anyway so the bullpen was at fault for it uh, but there were good takeaways from this game then Saturday we played them again this time Victor Victoria was ours alright First things first, Solaire struck out swinging, but Birdie scored. What this means is there was a swing and a miss, and it was a wild pitch. Now, don't forget, John Birdie, he's fast. He is fast like Brett Gardner for the Yankees. He is fast. And Billy Hamilton, too. He's fast. Um, Solaire, with a power hitter, was trying to get the first base, but he was caught on a force play at the first base. So... He was caught out. Um, so, oh gosh, a hacker tried to get me. I'll block it in a second. Um, anyway, 
Dugar would double to let that allowed Estrada to score at the tie of the game. And that was at the fifth inning. Then Jesus Sanchez singled to let a big hit. He's going to be the lefty guy for us for the rest of the year, Jesus Sanchez. So we have faith in him, and I hope we have faith in him too. Um, that allows Brian Anderson to score. And this was the moment where, you know, the relief pitching were trying to get things going. But thankfully, in the bottom of the ninth inning, there was good, there was two, there was a double play. And, um, and I think this was the game that was the, that was a nice double play. Um, but regardless, there was a double play and, um, and uh, a ground ball to shortstop and ended the game. We won 2-1 on Saturday, Saturday afternoon. Then on, then yesterday, um, it was the victory for the Giants, 3-2. Uh, we took the lead to seconds, but we gave the lead away in the seconds. Um, so Jazz Jism hit a sacrifice fly to center. That allowed Joey Window to score. He is a good hitter, Joey Window. He is. He hits the ball twice, as well as Solaire did, at least. Um, so those two guys had a good game. So Jism helped score a run, but Dubon, which is, which by the way, Dubon, or no, excuse me, it wasn't Dubon, it was Ramos. Uh, Ramos had a major league debut, and he got a base hit, so congratulations to Ramos. And it was Dubon, actually, to double, to hit a, uh, a double, and that allowed Ramos, who was major league, first major league hit, and his first major league uh, score. Um, so congratulations to Ramos. So the ball uh, is deserved. Williams single to right. Salo Dubon to score. That's in the second inning. Third inning, Flores hit a second fly fly to left. That allows Slater to score and Ruff to third. And Coop, uh, Garrett Cooper was hit by a pitch on a bases loaded. And that was a walk-in for Joey Wendell. So there was an opportunity for us. And then we wasted that opportunity. So there were a lot of wasted opportunities in this game. And oh boy, um, the relief pitching was pretty good. But our off our offense, you could say, was statistically better in this game. But the relief pitching was better. And the Giants were uh, better in this game. So the Giants win that series. But coming in June, uh, they come to Miami where we can beat them. It's a four-game series. So nothing, nothing, not much to complain about this series at all. So coming up tonight, we go to Anaheim, California, a interleague game. They're in the American League, and we are, excuse me, the National League. So it is a two-game series, and then we go back, to, we go to Miami to play against the Phillies, who are 2-1. So the standings right now, um, we are in fourth. We're 1-2 and two because some other, uh, some other teams actually have a game in hand. Um, so I'm not, not worried yet. I'm not worried yet. So it's still very early. A lot can happen. Um, and more importantly, a lot to get excited for, like really excited. So let's not jump to any conclusions yet. So I'm not worried. I'm not worried at all. And I don't think you should be worried about it either. All right. So let's talk about basketball. I'm, ig I'm itching to talk about basketball. So, this week has been a very good week for the Miami Heat. Um, so, this game against the Charlotte Hornets, final score was 144 to 115 in an incredible, out outstanding fourth quarter, which is like the highest in the season, 42 points in the fourth quarter. Um, P.J. Tuck with seven points. Jimmy Butler with 27 points, Bam Adebayo with 22 points, Gabe Vincent with 2 points, and Max Drews with 12 points. Um, Max Drews made the headline on ESPN and Sports Center for once. Uh, so, remember LaMelo Ball, right, on the Charlotte Hornets. It's uh, He's one of those guys who are going to be the player in the future. But... He gets ankle braked by Max Drews. So, outside the line, three point line, Max Drews broke his freaking ankle. 
he broke his ankle. Well, not literally, but it's a metaphor on basketball terms. But he broke his ankle. He lost his footing. He fell. Max Drew sued a three. So wish that made the headline. So finally, we're getting some respect that we long deserved. So, and a little bit later, Lamella Ball made a good pass, but it's an air ball, and somehow that made the airline. So the pass is one thing, but an air ball? How did that make it? Um, just asking a question. I think the Max Drews one is better. But yeah, fourth quarter, it's been all Miami. Let's let's be real. It's been all Miami. It's an outscored fourth quarter for Miami. So what a brilliant game for the Miami Heat. And they made me feel better. All right. So no game on Wednesday and no game on Thursday. But here's the thing about Thursday. that This was the day that we clinched first seed. Let me explain. We were two games up ahead of um, Boston. And we were also two and a half games ahead of um, Philadelphia. Was it Philly? Yeah, it was Philly. So, Philadelphia and Boston were right behind us. So, here was the narrative. We could clinch first place with a win. It was, technically we did win. But, there was another narrative. We could clinch first place on Thursday if two things, if one thing could happen. One, if the Philadelphia 76ers lose to the Toronto Raptors. And the Boston Celtics lose to the Milwaukee Bucks. So we w we will have to root for those teams, unfortunately, to uh, beat them so we can be in the first place. So there was some we were pessimistic about that, you know, because all those teams are good and there could be there could be a cake walk over, or one of those games could be a very close one. But the narrative did happen, and shockingly, Toronto Raptors beat Philadelphia 76ers 119 to 114 and the Milwaukee Bucks 127 to 121 over the Boston Celtics that made us clinch first place on Thursday so we clinched first place and um and there was so much to celebrate so the rest of the games were kind of meaningless but we wanted but we wanted to be able to play our starters to for the playoffs and we did that against the Atlanta Hawks, who have everything to play for, the Atlanta Hawks. What they're playing for is a higher seed in the play-in. So there's no doubt they're going to be in the play-in. But they want to go up higher over um, the Brooklyn Nets and the Cleveland Cavaliers, who are also in the play-in. So Brooklyn Nets is dangerous, but we are also dangerous. And... They, they fought like hell to beat the Miami Heat. However, unfortunately for Atlanta, um, Miami Heat was better. And we have proven that we are better. And we beat Atlanta Hawks 113-109. to So, uh, Jimmy Butler with 20 points. Caleb Morton with 8 points. Bam out of bottom with 24 points. Kyle Lowry with 16 points. And Max Drews with 6 points. Um, they, so, those key starters... They're going to go on the bench for the last game because, we one, we have to rest them, two, couple of injuries, and three, and I can't believe it's still a thing, the COVID protocols. So safety health protocol, and unfortunately, Ben Montebao had, um, had the virus. So he is, part, he is now in a um, uh, safety health protocol, uh, but... You know, now it's five days, so I, I don't think it would matter too much because our first game is April 17th. So maybe he'll be done by then, but who knows. But it didn't matter at the last game. It did not matter at the last game, which was last night. Our final game was in Orlando, Florida, where um, we put, we pretty much put our B team in. We put we, So all of our starters are not playing. All of them. Let's just be, let's say it. All of our starters are not playing in the game. Here's our starters. Um, so our stars was Haywood Highsmith, Omir Yersevin, uh, Victor Oladipo, Duncan Robson, and Michael Mulder, who was also a Magic player. Um, so this was a, this is pretty weird. Um, I think, I think he was also a, a guy for the Magic too. Um, but anyway, enough of that. So, 
who was who was who's kind of playing this game so Hassan was also playing Gabe Vincent was playing and um not Vincent Smart was also playing it was Javante Smart not not Jalen Smart Javante Smart uh Marcus Morth is didn't play because of a lip hip flexor so not much to be concerned here Caleb Martin and Max Juice uh it was Eric's uh, Eric Spolstra's decision, as well as other key stars' uh, decision, as well to to keep them on the bench. Uh, Hi, so High Smith with 16 points, Omir Yersevin with seven points, Victor Oladipo 40 points. So Victor Oladipo was carrying the B team, uh, but 40 points, what an impressive performance. Duncan Robinson, the only key starter, nine points. And Mulder with 11 points. Um, but, you know, we knew this was going to happen. So there was no way to complain. Um, so we so 111 to 125, Orlando. Um, avoided the sweep. Because, you know, Okiki with 17 points. Wagner with 14 points. Mobamba with 21 points. Fultz with 10 points. And Hampton with 21 points. So they're pretty good. Um, the only question for the Orlando Magic is this. Um... If, the, if they can turn around that historic bad season into a good season uh, next year with the with some draft picks. Our final record of the, of the regular season, 53-29. So that is the first time since the 2013, 2012, 2013, and 2014 season where we have 50 wins. This is the 10th time um, over under Pat Riley. So, a lot of things to look forward to. Um, so, we we know now we play against the eighth seed. But the question is, who will who would it be? We would like to know. We would like to know because Sunday, April seventeenth, is the game for us. So, it can be um, the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Brooklyn Nets. Or the Charlotte Hornets and Atlanta Hawks. My question is, who would you rather play? To me, I'd rather play Charlotte. So, your opinion does matter here. And you can say whatever you want. I would agree with you. No judgment there at all. So, your opinion is safe with me. But my opinion, I would like to play Charlotte. So... A lot of things to look forward to. It's playoff time, people. And oh my gosh, we're coming after the fourth title. We're coming for it. And want to know who else is coming for the first title? The Florida Panthers. Now, let me just say this, right? It was tough. This was tough to choose. There was actually three teams. There was actually the Miami FC. Believe it or not, Miami FC was in this uh, conversation. But there was the Florida Panthers, who was incredible this week. And there was also this team, into miami um, Allow me to explain later why I chose this team over the Florida Panthers. Um, F Florida Panthers, they are going for it too. Uh, before we talk about the Florida Panthers, let's quickly talk about Miami FC. So... Miami FC, they, this was a historic win for one reason. We went to St. Petersburg, which is a Tampa metro area. And it's being glitchy. Oh my gosh, I hate this. We go against the Tampa Bay Rowdies in St. Petersburg, who are, the Rowdies are in their downfall. Unfortunately for that, we took advantage over them to make it one nothing. And I'm trying to get to the freaking game on ESPN, but it's giving me a hard time. So... Yeah, let me keep trying here, folks. Let me keep trying. So, um, but yeah, we go to we go to St. Petersburg to play them. Tampa Bay Rowdies, Miami FC. We beat them one 0 and I can't seem to get to the freaking game. I apologize. Oh, there we go, finally. So one nothing, and it was it was it was Pereira, it was Pierre da Silva. In St. Petersburg to make a one nothing for Miami, and that happened in the 51st minute. So, so then in the defense at the end of the game, 
it was a hard fought defense and we were better because they were trying so hard to score an equalizer. And this was a historic win because we have never beat them on the road before. Not even, not even a tie. Maybe there were a couple of ties, but we never, we know, we know for sure we have never defeated Tampa Bay Rowdies in St. Petersburg, Florida, ever. This is our first time ever. We beat them at home, but we never beat them on the road. So congrats to Miami FC. And they play again on Saturday, I think. Yeah, Saturday against Hartford. Um, um, oh, we're not done with Miami FC yet. We're not done with them. Um, there was another thing. There was another thing we should point out about Miami FC, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit more um, when we talk about another soccer team. So, um, there was another game for Miami FC. It's not just the Rowdies. It was. It happened on uh, Wednesday. This was after you know the funeral, unfortunately. But I was able to watch this game. It was Miami, Miami. So. Miami FC versus Miami United FC. So, for those of you who don't know who Miami FC is, they are a they're a Miami team based in Miami, Florida, of course, for that region. Um, they're also in the in the league called the NPSL. And um, for those of you who don't know, I'll give, I'll give you a little bit of a lesson here. Miami FC was part of the NASL for the longest time. And they in the final years of the NASL, which is a North American soccer league, they were the dominant force, and they ultimately the season was ruined by the Deltas. And another good team that was there was the Cosmos. So Miami FC was involved in that, but the the league was on hiatus, and unfortunately the league ended up uh, being folded, which was a which is an unfortunate thing. But Miami FC. Um, there was Miami FC 2 that came into the NPSL. And it, part of the original Miami FC team came to the Miami FC 2 because the history, history based on the good players that were um, transferred from that team into the another. Um, and the NPSL, Miami FC was actually the dominant force. So they were creating the dynasty. And, and it proves here. They actually won a... NPSL championship and I did watch the game believe it or not. I did watch the game. It was against FC Motown in New Jersey um, The final score of that game was 3-1 um, And one of those was via penalty and Motown was actually playing with 10 men because they had a red card aka the ejection card and That changed the narrative for the Miami FC and we won it all in 2018 um in the 2019 season, they actually changed from Miami FC to, to Miami FC, the original. So they changed the name, and again, they were pretty dominant. They're looking for a repeat, and they did get the repeat in 2019. They beat the New York Cosmos B. So they were so good, they did not need to be in the NPSL. And eventually they were promoted up to the USL Championship. Now the reason why I pointed out NPSL, because Miami United did have history with Miami FC. Um, so there was, a, there was some history between those two teams. And Miami FC was no stranger to Miami United. Because Miami FC obviously won the game. Now Kyle Murphy with the penalty. Um, it was saved first. But the, but the goalie for Miami United moved too early of the encouragement. So the penalty had to had to be done again. So they did it again. Kyle Murphy was first goal with the Miami FC. So congrats to him. Then, in the 30th minute, uh, Antoniha, to make it... Ante, uh, I can't say the name. But he scores uh, the second game, the second goal. And Romeo Parks to end the game. Very late in the game to make a 3-0 Miami FC. And that was in the second round. So, congrats to that. And they move on into the third round. Who will they play? We'll tell you in a little bit. Um, so, their next game is Hartford this Saturday. Pretty excited. Miami FC is starting to get excited again. All right. All right. Enough with Miami FC for now because I will, I will get back to that topic pretty soon.
But let's talk about the Florida Panthers, who are the heavy favorites to win the Stanley Cup now. So this is where against this is where against tense and nerve wracking. Um, so after coming off with a after coming up with a convincing win over the Tampa Bay Lightning six two in um, Tampa, Florida, T Toronto comes into Sunrise to try to beat us again, and they and they did, or so we thought. All right, so. Let's see what happens. Sam Reinhardt with a power play goal to make it one nothing Florida. William Nylander in a power play goal to make it one one. So, okay, second periods. There was, I'll tell you what, how many goals there are. You ready to hear this? Seven goals in the second period. Mitchell Martiner for the for the Toronto Maple Leafs. It was a shorthanded goal. It was an ugly goal that should not happen. Mitchell Har Har Mitchell Martiner again with the power play goal. So he had a shorthanded goal and a power play goal in the same period, and it happened forty seven seconds after. Isn't that crazy? Colin Blackwell with a good goal to make it four one. And, but, and by the way, this happened so early in the second period. It was starting to get ugly. But we could also hope for another comeback. And then Jake Muzin to make a 5-1 Toronto. It, so it got ugly. We're down four goals again. But we have history of doing it. And then they were giving us hope. So Sam Reinhart with the second goal of the game. It was another. It was also a power play, and so they make a five-two. And, and again, Radko Gudis made his third goal of the year. A defense guy with a shorty. So, so we don't see that every day. And then, and then Claude Garouz to make it a goal to make it five-four. So things are getting there. This things are getting there. So second, so third periods, we we can only hope for like another comeback. What we did with New Jersey. But unlike New Jersey, Toronto is a good team. They are a good team. So there was more pressure on us to Toronto over New Jersey. So John the Huberto ties the game in the third period early. And the power play goal. And a little bit later afterwards, it was our captain, Sasha Barkov, with his 34th goal of the year to make it 5-6 Florida. Oh my God, it happened again. Or so I thought. John Tavares to make it a power play goal to tie the game before the game ends. So we were hoping for overtime, and there was an overtime. And um, so we got an overtime, 6-6. Six, six. And, and, who, and who ended the game? You guessed it, guys. It's the Florida Panthers, 7-6 again. Second time. In this season, in overtime, nonetheless, to make a 7-6 final score. And who did it? You guessed it. Jonathan Huberdeau. Who be be do And it was assisted by Mackenzie Weger and Barkov. So they did it again. Twice in the last four years. Or three years. So four years in, in the span. Three years in the calendar. Twice it happened in 2019 and 20 season. One of which happened in Boston, and another one happened in Sunrise against Anaheim. So there was some history there. Then it happened again in New Jersey and against Toronto. The only team to ever other do so. Um, I forgot who it was. There was another team. I, could, I can't really think of it the second. But um, Florida Panthers became second team ever to, to achieve that history. And... And we're proving that we're going for it. We have 108 points. Um, eventually, eventually Toronto did clinch the playoff, but we're trying to clinch the Atlantic Division, and we and we have a few games left to do so. Tampa Bay Lightning is on the losing streak too. So, so yeah. Um, then our next game was on Friday. It was against the Buffalo Sabers in Sunrise. So. So let's see here. Victor Olsen to make it one nothing in a power play goal. Claude Giroux to make it 
to make a uh, tie game on the power play. There was Mark Pistis to make a 2-1, and Jeff Skinner to make a 3-1 for Buffalo. So Buffalo was on this on the thing, but we're not really too worried about it because we because we are the comeback cats. We are proving that we are the comeback cats because we did just that. Patrick Hornquist to make it 3-2. And then Sam Reinhardt to make it a power play goal on Friday, 3-3. So, afterwards, so third period, there was some tensions rising. And and who, and who um, and there was that one guy, one guy, a Calgary Flame, to end the game for us. It is Sam Bennett. A nice goal to end the game against Buffalo. And they, once again, they rallied up late. And we came all the way back to beat them 4-3 once again. So we came back twice in the same week against Buffalo. And this has been it's been one of, this this season has been incredible. It really has been incredible. Uh-oh, I'm playing a video. But we can't celebrate just yet because we have to go up to Nashville, who beat us earlier. And boy, did we we did beat them pretty good actually. So, Carter Verhage, 1 0. Ryan jo Johansson to make it 1 1 Nashville. Uh, then, in the second period, Anton Lundell to make it 2 1. Then, next, Jonathan Huberto and, Gust and Gustav Forsling to end the game to make it 4 1 Florida. And we beat Nashville. So, we got ourselves a revenge. Um, so, so, Nashville, so, Nashville with this, yeah, it's. This we're, we're 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 going for it. Let's just be real. We're going for it, but we still have to watch out for a couple of teams. One of which was the New York Rangers, who recently clinched, and uh, we're we are expecting we're expecting um, teams like the Lightning, Boston to clinch the playoff spot. So that's expected. We're also expecting Washington to uh, clinch the playoff spot for the wild card. So if there's any team we were going to play. It is against um, Washington, so that is something we got to keep an eye on because they do have they do have a um, they do have a history of winning a cup, as well as other teams. We're the only team as of as of now in this playoff series in the Eastern Conference who have not won a cup yet. Toronto Maple Leafs won a cup. Lightning is going for the dynasty. Boston won a cup. Carolina won a cup. New York has won the cup. Pittsburgh has won a cup. And Washington is on the cup. We're the only team who does not have that resume yet. And that's the and that's the point I'm trying to make here is we have to beat that next team to do so. This if there's no other playoff series that is so important in our lifetime right now, it's this one. It's this one because we are going for it. We're not we're not messing around anymore. We want the gold. We want to be the best sports city in America. We want the gold. We want it now. And we got and we gotta keep pushing through to be the next champions. We gotta do it. I'm excited for it. I hope you're excited for it too, because Miami Heat is going for it. Heck, the Dolphins are even going for it. We got we gotta see. We gotta see this because the summer of Miami is coming, folks. And finally, this was a tough choice between the Florida Panthers and Inter Miami. So I complained last week, you know, Phil Neville was not the guy. But I'm starting to think maybe Gonzalo, maybe not playing Gonzalo Higuain might, might be better off because he was not playing. And we and we won the game. Isn't that ironic? We won the game. Now this was okay. We won the game in our bad season. Why is why are they a winner of the week? It's an historic win because let me tell you why it's an historic win. We didn't win because well we had to. We didn't win because New England had a sucky defense, in which they did. We won because we have something to prove, and that's for all Miami teams. If they're um, especially in the Northeast too, as well as other cities like LA. If you're not playing well, you're gonna get booed. Last week when they played against the Dynamo and lost to the Dynamo, 
even the players coming towards the pl the players coming towards the fans to try to get the ovation, they did not get any ovation at all. They were booed off a storm because we do not believe in rebuild. We believe in competition. It's been a painful few weeks, folks. It's been a very painful few weeks. And I give props to the Inter Miami fans for expressing their frustrations and anger. And, des and they deserved it, too. The team deserved it. The coach deserved it. Um, and, you know, Phil Neville, to, give, to, to be fair with Neville, um, he is trying. I will say he is actually trying. But some of us lost faith in him. Even me. I still don't have faith in Phil Neville. But he is trying. And he took the blame. You Like, wow. He took the blame in the, in the press conference. He said, I deserve the blame. Um, it was deserved to get booed. Because he was the guy who threw his players under the bus at Gonzalo Higuain. He was throwing his players under the bus. And that's what got us upset. We were questioning his leadership as well as we were questioning David Beckham's ownership. So, we were on national television, expecting us to get embarrassed, right? I guess New England Revolution, a former supporter, um, supporter Shield uh, winner. And we were going to get Kate Walk, because uh, Justin Rennix to make it 1-0 New England. Um, and then, a little bit later, we actually responded quickly. Leonardo Capana. So, Leonardo Capana equalizes to make a 1-0. And then, in the 23rd minute, guess who scored again? It's a Miami, 2-1. And it was Leonardo Capana. So, already 2-1. Two, so already two, two one. Uh, Capana with his second goal of the game. Um, so, yeah. So, we, so, uh, so I, for me being pessimistic, I'm just like, yeah, I'm not going to believe in this narrative of... Uh, winning the game because it is a New England team, but their key players are out and their defense is kind of a bit shady. Um, then, then in the 67 minute, there was a penalty in which uh, in which he did. There was a penalty given, um, so I'm not gonna complain about that one. And it was it was it was Carlos Gill, a, M a MLS MVP, to make to be equalized on the penalty. Then there were some set pieces. And we were trying to go for it. We were trying to take advantage of the fact that the New England had a bad defense. And we did in the 80th minute. And guess who scored? You guessed it. Leonardo Campana with a hat trick. So this is why this was a historic win. A hat trick on a bad season already. Leonardo Campana pretty much carried us a win. So Leonardo Campana, thank you for... Winning us the game, and you're the first player in into Miami history to win with a hat trick, and that is your final score, three to two over New England Revolution. So an historic win because um, because we never had a hat trick before, and to have that happen on national television. Um, it was. It's very special. It's very special because some teams, um, some teams actually never had uh, hat tricks before, and I'm shocked. I'm gonna be. You're gonna be shocked when I tell you this too. Portland Timbers does not have a hat trick in their in their franchise history, and think of how long Portland Timbers has been. I'm gonna look this up right now, because Portland Timbers has been around for a while. 2009. So 2009, they've been in the league. Not one time there was a hat trick. Our first, our third season in a, in the first three years, we have one hat trick, and it was Leonardo Campana, and he went and deservedly he won a player of the week, deserved deservedly so. He should win player of the week. He should. But I don't know. He did win the player of the game. I hope he's player of the week, Leonardo Capana. First ever hat trick into Miami history. And, and, and into Miami was the first team over Portland Timbers, at the very least, to ever done so. 
that's why, and that was one more reason I picked them to be winner of the week. It was a shock. It's a shock, but that's why I picked them. So, and, it, and believe me, it was tough. It was a tough choice to make because I just don't. Because it's been, because like I said early in the video, a lot of good outweighed the bad. And I think this was deserved more. And it happened on national television too. Um, but we're not done. We're not out of the woods with this yet because we have a very tough Seattle Sounders next week on FS1. Should be an FS1, it looks like. Uh, but another game on national television. Everyone's going to be watching Seattle. They're going to kick it. They're probably going to kick our asses, but um, it's a, I don't know. I don't know. This game I'm nervous about. And I'll be shocked if we win this game. If we won this game, then maybe I was wrong about Full Neville. But if we did lose this game, it wasn't because... It probably wasn't because... Well, maybe. The defense might be lackluster. But Seattle, they know how to win the game. So that loss, if that did happen, I would not be mad over. Because they are a good team. And I probably expect them to beat us. Because they are a good team. They are such a good team. But they did win against a very good Seattle Sounders. Expect this team to be winner of the week again. Or if the Marlins play good baseball. Or the Florida Panthers did something incredible. I don't know. A lot of good is happening right now. A lot of good. Miami Heat's not playing this week except for Sunday. Because we're waiting because we have to wait for Friday. Because Friday is the day where we know who is gonna be our opponent for the eighth spot. So I'm very excited about it. Um so, before I end this video, I did tell you, uh, I want to go back to the Miami FC real quick. So, Miami FC moves on to the United States Open Cup Challenge. They move on to the third round. And who do they move on to? So, this is, this is the matchup I'm very excited for. Um, so, this is the matchup I'm very excited for. I can't get to this stupid thing. It's so annoying. So, it was either Monday, or no, now they updated it. It's Tuesday. Tuesday, April 19th, 7 o'clock. Miami FC plays into Miami in FIU. So, that's a match I'm very excited for. So, it is a Miami Classico. And for me, I'm going to personally call it a Miami TVG Derby. Because I, I, I saw both of those teams play in the South region. So, I'm very excited for that game. Um... And if you ask me who am I going to go for, you know, I don't know. I have no idea. They're both Miami teams. Uh, there should, it should be a friendly match, for say the least. Um, but there was, there was a little... Uh, to tell you a little bit of backstory about this real quick before we end this video, with this Miami Classico that's happening the first time ever, there was some controversy that Miami FC uh, did uh, in, on Twitter. So, you welcome a team... They welcome me into Miami to play in the real Miami City. Now, for those of you who don't know, Inter Miami plays actually plays at Fort Lauderdale in Dry Pink Stadium because they're trying to they're trying to get the vote in on Freedom Park in Miami Miami, Florida. As of right now they're playing in Fort Lauderdale in the meantime before their real stadium it starts to happen. So So there's a there's some trash talking from Miami F C and their fan base. <clears throat> to say we like we like to welcome you down to the real Miami town where you play in real you play in real Miami. So what that means this is this is the controversy uh, right here. So it's fine if you're welcoming a team to play at a match, but to scold them and alienate them to play them in the real Miami in the real Miami cities, um, or saying that hey we we're playing in Miami where do you play Fort Lauderdale? You're alienating. The fan base to say to, for me to say because to me it should not be who's um because they play in a different leagues man mind you if anything Miami FC could have made it to the MLS but into Miami won by David Beckham so a rivalry is already starting for no reason Miami FC and the fan base um, alienating into Miami fans 
for saying that, that they play in Miami and into Miami does not. Um, and for those who don't know, some of the Miami FC fans actually became into Miami fans. So it is a great area for some of us like me. And to me, it sucks because I just want to watch a good game, see which team is better, which Miami team is better. Um, but to them alienate into Miami fans, now they want into Miami to win. And if they do win against Miami FC, isn't that karma? I don't know. But who knows? I'm not thinking about that right now. I'm thinking about this weekend for the Sounders game. And more importantly, I'm thinking about the playoffs. So, Miami Clasco, um, it's going to happen. And it's going to be a fun game to watch. But that's not in my top priority. My top priority is the Miami Heat playoff basketball and the Florida Panthers hockey playoffs. So, that is my number one priority of winning the game. So, yeah, a lot to look forward to, but the alienated, uh, the fan base is, is just wrong. Uh, but that's going to do it for this video. Um, I'm sorry this was a long one. It's a 51-minute video. I'm sorry. Um, but, yeah, a lot to talk about and a lot of good things that's happening. Marlins baseball is back. Miami Heat playoffs, Florida Panthers playoffs coming up. It's a Miami winning a big, big game. Um, football on its way. A lot to look forward to. And yeah, folks, that's going to do it for this video. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe for more content because Miami TVD has your back. When we do, we're right there with you, the entertainment you deserve. Gaming coming up, Season Zero is on its way. Um, and yeah, I'm super excited for this because it's going to be one hell of a ride, folks. So, Miami TVD is Sunday off, folks. Good night, everybody.